Hey, what is up? Welcome back Design Squad. And in this video, I'm gonna continue on development of the gamification methods and how to do it right. Because you know, one thing is to just throw different bits around and say, hey, let's gamify this stuff. And then add some sort of funky stuff which you cannot prove. And the other way is to actually use a framework which has been proven and which has very tangible outcomes and very tangible methods. So one, you can actually come up with very meaningful ways to gamify the experience and two you can actually showcase it to your stakeholders that hey we're using a very methodical approach instead of just guessing or ideating in random ways and so in this session i'm going to talk to you about octalysis framework this is a framework I mentioned to you in the actual Noob to Master series challenge video where I asked you to prototype some gamified experiences and improve the different experience so that the users can actually feel engaged, empowered, and generally have a good time. And so this framework is something I've been using for years now. It's by Yukai Cho uh, who created this framework, who defined it and you can find it online and you can find a lot of different material of how to use it. It's based off of these eight different principles and eight different needs from the user. For example, every person is in search of meaning. Every person needs empowerment. Every person needs social influence. They face scarcity. They need ownership. They need to be and feel accomplished. We know that for sure. Some of these bits are going to resonate more than the others. And in digital means, sometimes you have to use it differently. And so these are just an example of how we could use it. Just knowing that your users, for example, would be caring about accomplishments. Maybe they're a runner and they need your product or service to be all about empowerment and accomplishment. Then you would double down on these status points, leaderboards, progress bars, things of that nature. That makes sense, right? It's as simple as that. And so I have a few examples of how, let's say, tools you definitely use before or you're aware of use it. And this is a perfect case study just in one picture. So look at this, Facebook, for example. This is, of course, is a bit older representation. I think it's years old, but I think it still stands. And if you're a user of Facebook, you probably used it back in the day. So you're gonna see the transition and maybe gonna be like, huh, they improved on this bit already, and that's good. Now you're gonna know exactly how they gamified it better or improved the experience better. Now we all know that we're humans and we, for example, I'm just picking this meaning bit, the elitism, staying in touch with friends, talking and stuff like that. Of course, it's empowering, but it's not as gamified, let's say, as, for example, social pressures, where your friend invites, touting, envy, stuff like that, that even more so, which you can double down on your UI end and your UX end and kind of like gamify those bits. Unpredictability, for example. So mini quests, refreshing content, suspense, you know, you never know what's you, what you're gonna uncover. And let's say even that endless list, infinity list, which you scroll and you're always gonna get something new is one of those bits keeps people hooked up and use Facebook and keep on checking if they get notification, for example, off of a social pressure, off of a unpredictability. Besides that, you can always just, you know, pause this video and study these bits, but ownership is super important because if you remember when, for example, when you got gotten started the Facebook or MySpace or any other platform, you always have an ability to make it yours. Facebook has it very limited compared to MySpace, still gives you that empowerment to take ownership and define these things. So you can define who your friends are, what memories you share, how you share it. You can build your profile from scratch and it makes it quite intuitive. And you know, you, you basically have progress bars of how full your profile is, how you progress with your profile. And it all has so these tiny little nudges and tiny little UI elements to make it easier for you to keep on doing it and kind of you know, build ownership through these simple means and simple gamified means. Now let's jump to very similar Twitter. Well, if I take the same accomplishment or ownership, Twitter has very limited way to personalize the experience. You can put a photo, you can put the header element, you can update the simple information, follow or unfollow, make lists, things of that nature. On the same way, the accomplishment is higher because you know that you have follower gain, so you have a number. Sheer number representation is a way to gamify your interfaces. It's the same with dashboards, let's say. If you can present a delta, a growth, 
with a simple arrow going up, maybe some follower list, big number, big numeric value always resonates with people. It actually forces them to go beyond and up that number. And so it's the same with retweets, responses, those hard elements, the like of uh, Twitter, let's say, how many hearts you collect, it's number, but it's also that emoticon, which plays well with our emotions and how we respond to different bits. On the same level, there is other bits, for example, social pressure, as you can see, it's a big one. That's a growth in that doctalysis framework. To gain friends, you have responses, companionships, and how that collects, let's say, in threads right now in Twitter, where, you, let's say, you have, you can make a thread, which is continuous post, like an essay, but then you also collect the replies, and it all stitches together, so it looks like you actually have a chat. Now, Diablo 3, it's a game. For example, I loved Diablo 2 back in the day and I was very obsessed with it. It's a hack and slash game, role playing in a way game. And so you can pick your character. It's a fictitious medieval slash magic type of environment and, you know, spell casting and, and monster killing type of game. It's super engaging, super empowering, super awesome. You can see the Octavius framework is kind of filled in more or less equally around. For example, social pressures, it's multiplayer game. So adding a multiplayer option makes, of course, social pressure to perform because if you are with your friends, you want to join, you want to connect with people, you want to do something together. Like, for example, from accomplishment side, you have leveling up. So you always have a level progress bar. You have a level indicator. You're gaining experience and the bar collects and you, for example, you might spend extra time on the interface in the game because you just have maybe 95% of experience and you're like, oh, I could collect another 5% in the next few minutes and so you would stay longer and you're more engaged and chances are you would go longer playing the game and you would be even more engaged same for plot lines let's see the cinematics of diablo 2 and 3 were amazing you know all the storyline of how it sucks you in as a user as a player as a customer as someone in the role of a different character with their own abilities their own skills magic gamified experience and it's a game it's a perfect example like where do you think these type of bits and this type of framework came from it's exactly from the games the actual games let's say the progress bars we have in ui and it's literally a rip a take from games like diablo and uh, any other which were you know decades ago implemented for people to enjoy their time and to have a good experience. And so for us to get inspired, we need to use more of this framework as much as we can. I would encourage you to again, read up on Octalysis framework. I'm going to cover it going forward more and more because gamification is always relevant. It doesn't matter where you are. If you want to design meaningful experiences based off your user research, where you understand your users, you're going to use the gamification you want it or not, because you work with actual people and people play things they play every single day and so why not to apply a framework which is already defined which gives you more mana for a lack of a better word and so check it out if you have used it before or you have any other approach to gamification leave a comment down below if you like this video give a like if you haven't subscribed to this channel i recommend you to do so and so on that note i'll see you next time